Hailed as the next Graham Pollock of South Africa, Daryl Cullinan played a key role in Hansi Cronier's team of 90, which had stalwarts like Gary Kirsten, Jacques Carlis, Alan Donald and Sean Pollock. Records and Kalinan were made for each other. At 16, he was the youngest to score a first-class 100 in South Africa. Then he cracked a mind-boggling 275 against New Zealand and eclipsed Graham Pollock's highest test score. Afterwards, that record was broken by Hashim Amla. Aggressive by nature, Kalinan endorses impact batting approach of Brian Lara and Varenda Sewag. Impact he really had. He notched 14 test hundreds. When he got a hundred, South Africa lost only once. Post retirement, Kalinan is firmly into coaching and commentating. As the director of coaching with MS Dhoni's Cricket Academy, his vision is to spread the wing across the globe. In this episode of Free Willing Chinmoy, let's explore the candid side of Daryl Kalinan. More after the showreel. Welcome Daryl Kalinan in this special episode of Free Willing Chinmoy. My first question is, at the age of 16, you broke one record. To become the youngest South African to score a first class 100 and you eclipsed uh, none other than Graham Pollock and then you were hailed as the next Graham Pollock. Do you think that these kinds of tags does uh, weigh uh, a cricketer down? Hi Chinmoy. With regard to your yes. question on being dubbed the next Graham Pollock, I think it was to do with circumstances more than anything else. At 16, I broke his record to become the youngest first-class centurion in South African first-class cricket. So that meant that obviously the, the comparisons were going to be made, but well, I never was going to be the next Graham Pollock. Uh, he was for me the best batsman that I ever saw him played against. Uh, at one point of time, you held the highest first-class score as a South African, which was 337. And uh, then that 274, that epic innings you got against New Zealand. And one time it was the highest in Test cricket. With so many records under your belt, do you think that runs you got in Test cricket with 1400s, uh, did it satisfy you, settle for that? Uh, I can't quite remember who the player was, but I broke his record to become the scorer of the highest uh, scoring first-class cricket in South Africa, which was 337. And I think that was around about 94, 95. And then around about 99, I broke Graham Pollock's other record, which was for the highest uh, test score, which was 275 not out. So at the same time, I held both records, which uh, something I never thought I would achieve, but I am very proud of. A good question, after 70 tests, four and a half thousand runs, no. I was not happy, I thought that I should have averaged closer to 47, 48 in the end, scored a few more runs. I just had the annoying habit of giving it away too often. In 1994, when David Malcolm was firing on all cylinders, you played that astonishing innings of 94, when South Africa got only 159 odd runs. Uh, that is still spoken of as one of the great innings, not though a hundred you played. Any memories of that? The innings, the 94 against uh, Devon Malcolm, we got nine wickets for England right. in that innings. That was at the Oval. Uh, it was probably my bravest test innings. It certainly bought me more time. I had uh, previously toured Australia, got dropped, so I was very relieved when I got the opportunity to go to England. So when the opportunity came about in the third test, I was so up for it. And it was a great challenge. My skill was always playing quicker bowling. And again, it's, it's an innings that I was particularly proud of. One tragic moment of 1999 World Cup still rankled most South Africans. Alan Donald getting run out, leaving South Africa just one shot of reaching the final. Babul Ma South Africa from then on picked up an infamous choker's tag. Was that too harsh an observation? And losing that match, um, yes, I uh, often think back to it and what could have been done better, where did we go wrong, it was just meant to be in many ways, 
Yes, the, the Joker's tag came back to haunt us. I think it's for too long and it seems to have now died off that uh, it's a tag that has been wrongly uh, comments made about us in, in that regard. I think in the early days we lacked the experience, as I said, and perhaps the knowledge and, and the demands of international people. Kalinan was heavily criticised for his struggle against Shane Warne. A write-up by South African journalist Telford Rins had him so upset that he went and asked the journal, how many first-class matches have you played? The journalist said, how many first-class matches have you covered? In that context, how tough it is for a cricketer to absorb these kinds of criticism. That was many, many years ago. And today we actually quite good friends and uh, we enjoy speaking cricket to each other. I never had a great relationship with uh, just about every single cricket journalist. And that was my nature. If I had it over, perhaps I'd look at it differently. And he was a young man too, not very experienced too, in terms of his cricket writing. So he learned some good lessons. Uh, during that exchange and, and, and what was to follow be, between us. But I'm glad to say that um, you know, things are really good today. Daryl, you are the uh, Director of Coaching with uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni's Cricket Academy. And uh, I want to know really what exactly is your vision? Where you want to spread out? Let me first of all say that I'm very proud to be associated with the yeah, Mr. Dhoni Cricket Academies uh, for a long time been a great admirer. Our vision would be to add value. I think we feel that uh, there's a lot to offer. It uh, is something that MS is passionate about, taking cricket to all parts of the world and creating opportunities around cricket for all young cricketers. 